<laughs> okay, um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Courtney Bertos, and I am now a year and a half into coaching. I signed up in November of 2013. Um, I had been drinking Shakeology actually for a few months and had no idea there was a business opportunity um, or anything in, in that aspect of um, Beachbody other than I knew Insanity and then Shakeology. So I had seen um, my friend who I'd known years before, Jessica Bryson um, from Team Arise and she was posting about T25 coming out and I had done Insanity um, before just borrowing it from my brother um, on and off and have always been able to work out and into fitness. I was a collegiate athlete and um, that has always been the easier part for me but then when school ended and getting into teaching and coaching full time, it just wasn't as much of a priority. And I know nutritionally I needed the Shakeology desperately. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll try it. And, you know, haven't stopped drinking it every day since. Um, so when I got in touch with Jess and she let me know about T25 um, and then asked about if I'd ever been interested in coaching, and here I am, a full-time high school Spanish teacher. I coach field hockey, basketball, and softball. Um, I run field hockey and softball clinics throughout the year for the younger kids. And I just never thought I could possibly fit anything else on my plate. I was already pretty overwhelmed um, with schedules and to-do lists and going to bed and fitting in my own working out and all that stuff. So I was like, yeah, no. But then she told me about the Shakeology discount. And I was like, well, I'm going to keep drinking it anyway. Sure, I will do that. And I do want T25, so let's figure it out. So I did it all backwards. I did not get a challenge back. Um, I paid the $39.95 fee, uh, fee to sign up as a coach uh, and then purchased T25. And she said, let me just send you some of the information about becoming a coach. Take a look at it when you can and let me know what you think. And this was coming up um, in November right in between field hockey and basketball season. And my second nephew was just born. Um, and my brother and sister-in-law live very close to us. And all of a sudden, basketball is now like having to start. And I'm devastated, like tearing, like crying. Just I can't believe that I'm not going to be able to go over there every day to see him and my other nephew, who was um, uh, almost two at the time. And like trying to think of what else can I possibly do as this – coaching thing is just sitting on my computer like check it out check it out and I'm like so I finally check it out and I said okay if I could figure this out and I, I just I don't do anything um half ass I I don't want to start something and not do it well or do it right so I I didn't tell anyone that I was coaching other than Jess and um, speaking with Rose. And for an entire month, I just watched videos. I went into the back office and just looked through things and the coach training academy. And um, I didn't, you know, publicly come out on Facebook or um, reach out to anyone about a coach basics yet. I needed to learn all the information as much as I could before I put that all out there. So I probably came out around the middle of December and then I uh, just took off from there. And um, to be honest, a few weeks in, I, it was the very first um, Super Saturday of 2014 in January, Rose said, oh, you're close enough to Philly. You want to meet there? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And I was just like, oh my God, this is a world that like I belong in. And it's not that I didn't feel a sense of belonging before that, but this is... Uh, like I said, I, I was a collegiate athlete and now I coach and I teach and it's all of these things combined without the political BS that happens now in education, unfortunately. Um, and it just gave me this bigger sense of purpose than um, I had just looking through the coach online office or even just talking, you know, about the possibilities of being coach. But um, going to that first Super Saturday really like was like, okay, all right, there's more than like, getting a discount potential here. Um, and that's how it's really snowballed for me and, and took off. And um, I'm, I've am i been a one-star diamond coach. I kind of go back and forth. And, um, you know, I, I have big goals and don't want to teach for the rest of my life. I love what I do. Don't get me wrong. But um, it's taxing and it's tolling. And 
at some point I, I am getting married um, this summer and would like to have the option at least when we do start a family to be able to take care of them in other ways and be there for them um, you know as they're growing up so that's kind of where I came from I, I also financially what this company has given to me um, I had a lot more debt than I have now and that's significantly decreased and it, I wouldn't be able to do that without um, Beachbody. Um, this past year from September to February my fiance went into the uh, State Police Academy so we were down to one income in the house and we were able to do it and stay afloat because of the Beachbody income um, and I, you know it's gonna really help us with all these wedding payments that are coming up in the next few weeks. Um, and I, I couldn't even break ground, it felt like, on that debt until um, Beachbody came along. So yeah, I wanted something at first that I could give up coaching basketball so I can spend time with my nephews and my family. And um, I'm not going back to basketball next year. I'm able to give it up and have that free time. Um, with John and my nephews and my family and all that so that's very exciting and um, you know the the sky's the limit and, and I completely believe in this company and, and if you guys do too you you can do like freaking amazing things it's it's awesome so um, that's just a little bit I guess about me I don't know did I miss anything no that was awesome and I tell people that all the time or like around that time we went to that super Saturday together I was like there was this new coach and she was just like, yeah, sure, I'll go. <laughs> Seriously though, after that, your business really exploded. Yeah. It's so different. Like, yeah, Zooms are cool, but when you are in a room with like mm -hmm. five people and you have some like hot guy doing Les Mills content, <laughs> oh my God, I fell in love with that guy. He was awesome. But um, yeah, <laughs> it just makes it so much more real when you get to go yeah. to those events. July 25th is... Uh, Super Saturday, and then, I mean, there's still time for you guys to get into Summit, especially the new coaches. You still get a discount. I think it's like only like 150 bucks or something, and there's still rooms available, so if there's any people in the group that want to, like, get a room together, totally go for it. Because me and Courtney, Jess, Nicole, Aaron's um, wife is going to be there, um, Lisa, and there's going to be a bunch of us there, so it's going to be yeah. a lot. And that's the thing, Super Saturday, that was the first live event that I went to and like that little spark, but, and, and by all means go to them as often as you can and, you know, get to them and take notes and learn from these people, but Summit, like, turned that up about like nine notches <laughs> and we came back like, oh my God, there's so much to do, we could do so much with this and, and it really, you know, you have these Super Saturdays quarterly and then you have Summit in there and it's just, it, the business, the you know, Team Beachbody actually continues to light your fire in case you're ever dying out. <laughs> um, but it's it's awesome, and you know, I'm sure you guys are feeling it already. And you know, if not, that's what we're here to help you do. And um, it's exciting. Yeah, I mean, this company just has so much potential, and I love how everybody can kind of just come in on this business at the same playing level. So it doesn't really matter if you have a degree or what your story or background is. You know, you don't have to mooch up to the boss because you're your own boss. Mm -hmm. And if you put in the work, you're going to reap the benefits. It's not like someone's out trying to get you or you're trying to steal somebody's job and they feel threatened, so they're not going to give you a raise. You know, there's no type of bull crap here. It's just whatever you put into it, you get out of it. Um, you know, us as leaders, we're here to help you, support you, give you the tools to – take this as far as you want to, but it is ultimately up to you. We could give you guys so much training, your head would probably fall off, but unless you actually did the action in those trainings, it's not gonna do anything. And I think that's where a lot of new coaches get stuck right in the beginning, is they, they'll read, they'll watch videos, and then they'll just stand still. And it's like, no, <laughs> like you actually have to do what's in those videos and do what we're telling you to do to do in the training um don't wait until you get to your goal because you're never if you get to your goal then you don't have goals that are big enough you always want to keep having goals um you don't so you don't need to be at your goal weight or you don't have to 
wait until his training's over to let people know, or you don't have to know the whole encyclopedia on Shakeology. You just don't. You just have to go out there, do it. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. Um, you're probably going to make a fool of yourself a couple of times here and there. I've done it. Courtney's done it. And that's the only way you're going to learn in a business like this. And with this business, I tell people, you are supposed to fail more than you succeed. It, it's kind of backwards to kind of like how we went to school. Like you kind of, if you didn't get like a B or an A, you know, that's it. But here, like you're allowed to fail. You're kind of like, what's that saying, Courtney? Um, like fail forward. Mm -hmm. I love like, that. Yeah. So you learn from your failures. And a lot of this is honestly just a big numbers game of how many people you reach out to. So, you know, say you reach out to some people and you get one yes. That's a success. And most people are like, well, nine people said no. Yeah, but one person said yes. And in this business, that's what success is. So if you want to get 10 yeses, then you have to reach out to 100 people. That's just kind of the numbers game. Even if it's me or Courtney reaching out to people, we might get two or three yeses because we've been doing this for a little bit longer. But when you first start out, you're going to have a lot of those no's and you're going to have that one yes here and there. But you have to look at that and, and see that that as success and then just keep duplicating see okay what did I do that time that worked and then do it again and then see what you did that time and just kind of keep looking at it keep redirecting what you're doing until you get a formula that works you know 50% of the time um, and that's kind of like what is done in the GoPro by Eric War that's one of the books we want you guys to read he says you know do have a plan, do that plan, see how that plan went, and then see how you can do it better next time. Mm -hmm. And then do that plan, see how it did, and then redo it again, do it. And you just keep doing that until you find success with that. Um, what else did I want to say before we kind of get into the Facebook stuff that we wanted to go over tonight? Anything else before we kind of get into that stuff, Court? Um, no, I would just, I, you kind of touched on it. Just remember one, it is your business and, and don't compare yourself to anyone else because you're going to go at your own pace and you're going to be your own success. And, you know, I, I know I'll be the loudest one cheering if you surpass me and I'll, you know, and Rose the same and will also be the biggest one supporting you when you're struggling. But you're going to see a lot of success in the business when you're following the top coaches and all that stuff. And just remember, and, and Rose has had to say this to me, like put the blinders on. This is your business and you're doing it for you. You, you have a why um, and, and what's driving you and, and the purpose behind what you're doing. So go back to that and, and let that be your driving force. Not like, oh my gosh, I need to be the top coach by, you know, next week. Just go at your own pace and evolve. And, um, you know, if you're looking at money and how much money you're going to make, that is a direct reflection of how many people you're going to help, whether it's customers and coaches and getting people on board, you know, to help spread the love of it. Um, that one in 10 that's going to say yes, that's one more person you're helping save their life from this like trend of obesity. So you, you kind of just have to spin it that way that you're helping people. And it's not like, Oh, like, shoot, I got turned down from that challenge. Back. That's going to happen. It's inevitable, but remember and focus on the willing and, and continue to support them. Um, because this business is about relationships and it's not about dollar signs and success club points. And those are all important and vital things to be successful and to keep growing in your business. But just remember that the root of it is helping people and paying it forward. I think when you do focus on the helping, of course, this is a business. I'm a business. Yeah, money, of course. Um, but when you really just focus on the helping, either with somebody's health and fitness or sharing the business opportunity with somebody to literally like see them from a job they absolutely hate or just spend mm -hmm. more time with the family or pay off student loans, whatever it is, all that money, all that other stuff that are your goals, are going to work out so help people get to their goals goals first and that's gonna help you so and I even tell my coaches you know to hit success club yeah you need five points but just look at it as helping three people don't look as oh my god I gotta get three challenge packs or I have to get five points no you're trying to help three people whether it's with their health and fitness 
or you're showing them how to support the lifestyle that they want. Look at it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so tonight we want to just go over like the basic um, rules of Facebook. There are so many things with Facebook. You know, me and Courtney probably have both built our entire businesses on Facebook. Um, you could YouTube, you know, trainings on Facebook. There's just so much information out there. I would say just start off really basic and, you know, you can totally do your own learning and read up on this. And there's a really great book um, that I have right here. It's called Jab, Jab, Right Hook. I have like 10 books piled on top of it. Uh, and it's really awesome. Of course, I tabbed it. Um, but it, it talks about how to use Facebook, how to use social media, and how to do it the right way. And it gives like really good examples of like bad social media and examples of good social media. So that's a really good book to pick up. Um, Jab, Jab, Right Hook, and that's by Gary Vaynerchik. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember Jab, Jab, Right Hook. You'll find it on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the really simple, simple things for Facebook right now um, is add five friends per day. That is pretty much the simplest way you're going to grow your network. There's an infinite number of people on Facebook, on social media. So whether you live in North Dakota and have, or live on a farm and there's like no one around for like hundreds of miles, you totally can rock this business because of social media. So add those five people per day. Actually, I'll, I'll share my screen. Because there's, whoopsies. <laughs> so all you have to do is go into friends, go to find friends, and then usually like here on the left it will say like you have 39 mutual friends with this person. Okay, she seems like she would know me and there's some <laughs> friends we have in common. Cool. I'm going to add her and you want to do that. I don't know. Okay. 30, 30, whatever. She went to my high school. I'm going to add her. So, you know, you want to do five per day. You can also look up people by um, where you live, your hometown, your high school, your college, um, your employer, what friends you have in common with. So sometimes I'll go to like my best friend's, page and see who uh, her friends are and kind of scroll through and be like, oh, did I ever meet this person? Um, so these are all great ways to find people. You can also go up in the search bar and put like um, people who like, um, i trying to think of a place like retro fitness. I don't know. <laughs> and then go to people. And then you'll get like a whole list. You'll get friends first, but then you'll get like people who aren't friends. Um, so that's another way you can search. So people who like and then put something that you like to do or like to go or some place that's in your town. And then what you want to make sure that happens is when those people do click yes, you want to make sure they click yes, right? You want to make sure they add you as a friend. So you're going to go to your homepage go to view activity log and then go to where it says more and then friends. This is going to show you who you sent a message to. So I just sent Luciana and Dana um, a friend request. They didn't accept it yet, which is okay. I just did it about five seconds ago. But let me see, Mallory, okay, she accepted my friend request. So what you want to do is just kind of scroll down and see who you sent a request out to and who did not accept. If they did not accept it, I'm trying to find somebody, you want to re, or you want to kind of like take that friend request back, because if you have too many that do not um, add you, then Facebook can kind of see that you're trying to spam people. Okay, so this chick, Lisa, um, I sent her, oh, what happened? I sent her a friend request. She might have just even um, taken it back. Because you can, she can just say no, and then the friend request isn't. So don't feel bad if people don't add you. Just move on to the next person. It's really not a big deal. So when I first started with this business, I only had 400 friends. I never used Facebook a day in my life, and I would stalk people. That's all I used Facebook for was to look at everybody else's stuff. So 
And now I have about 1,400 people. So just doing five people per day for two and a half years, it, it really got me a huge network of people to work out of. So make sure that you're adding those five people per day. Um, Courtney, do you want to go next? Yeah, from there, um, what you want to do is when you friend these people, don't just be like, okay, she accepted my, you know, and now I'm friends with her and that's, that's it, that's the end of it. Go to her time, his or her timeline and check things out. Um, check out their recent posts, pictures, are they sharing a lot? Um, does it say where they work? And like, sometimes when I explain this to people, it sounds like very stalkerish. It's not, it's just you doing your research and your homework. And you might see, oh my gosh, she works at um, a medical center or a hospital or a gym, something that you can connect to this business. Or you can scroll through and see that she's posting, um, sharing pictures about her family and sharing, you know, a vacation she just went on. And now you want her to know that you're following her. Not just you're friends with her and now you're gonna appear once in a while in each other's newsfeed, but go to a recent picture, comment on it, like it. Um, you know, you don't have to go down her entire um, timeline and do everything, but put her on your radar. And if it's someone that really stands out, um, that would be a good business builder. You, you know, if you can tell that right away, you can click um, when you're on their page notifications and you could follow when they post something um, or when they update their status and then you're able to comment right away and like again so that they know that you're following. Um, they, see, they feel a general conversation with them. Okay, so the friend request is huge. That's five a day. And then on top of that, you want to engage in conversation. And that's not even, we're not even talking beach body yet. We're talking general and genuine um, interest in someone else's life and, and learning more about them or reconnecting with them or finding something you have in common so that when you do present beach body, you've already laid down that foundation of a relationship. Um, and that, yeah, that takes a little bit of time, you know, to do or to follow, but it also helps you appear in their newsfeed more. Um, and it helps you track those that you think are going to be good business builders in the future. I was like, oh gosh, what happened? No, I'm trying to um, unmute. Yeah, so what Courtney was talking about is excellent. You definitely want to be social on social media. That's why it's called social media. You have to talk to people. You have to get out there. You have to, you know, talk about, you know, if they got married or they're going on vacation. Um, you have to like their posts. You have to comment on their posts. You don't want to be fake, um, but you do want to interact with people. Um, so what Courtney was saying, um, let me see if I have it done for Jessica. So on somebody's page, if you want to get notifications, where it will pop up right here, um, where that like world thing is. Anytime that person posts, you will automatically get a notification. So you want to do this for people that you kind of like have your eye on. Like if you think they're good coach material or somebody that you want like in your challenge group, um, you can just click get notifications or you can click close friends. And that will kind of see where that star popped up. Then I'll always get Jessica's um, notification. Uh, post every single time she posts and this is something good also when you have a new coach um, that you're working with that way you can always help them out and cheer them on because if we're not helping each other out as a team then you know having a team is kind of pointless so make sure you're also helping out the team on Facebook you know if you know then that's why we kind of had you guys all friend, send friend, friend requests to each other. That way you can help boost each other posts. Um, so that will kind of be the next thing I talk about is boosting posts. Um, you know, like Jessica did here. Sorry, I'm, I'm uh, kind of putting you on stage. But, I mean, she did a really good job of doing a nice picture. She has hashtags, which is awesome. Um, and she's talking about what it did for her. She's not saying, Shakeology is $130 with 21 day fix challenge packs on sale. No, she's not being icky about it. Um, and you can see like a lot of coaches on our team liked it. And what's that going to do? That's going to help that post get onto other people's newsfeed. So when I go to my homepage, there's a ton of stuff, right? 
And we want to make sure as coaches that our stuff is showing up on our friends' posts. In that book, Jab, Jab, Right Hook, I was talking about, I think only 5% of your friends actually see your post. So 5% of my 1,400 friends see my post, which is, I don't know, I'm really bad at math, but that's not <laughs> that many, that is not many people. But the more likes, the more comments, the more shares that you have for your posts, the more it's going to get up on your um, friends newsfeed and the higher on the newsfeed. So I have to scroll for like 10 minutes and like your post is all the way at the bottom. I'm probably not going to get to it, but if it was like at the top, I'm going to see it right away. So, um, a great thing that you can do in your post is actually say, and I did this today and I think it works. Um, for Lisa's congratulations. Help me show Lisa some love by liking this. So telling people what you want them to do at the end of your post. So either having a question saying, comment below what you're having for dinner today or comment below if you have breakfast in the morning. Um, or like this if you love having summers off or like this if you're a teacher or you know, share this recipe so you can save it to your Facebook. Those are ways that you're gonna have engagement so your friends are going to engage with you, and then it's gonna help that post stay high on the news feed. And another little trick you can do is also like and comment on your own posts. So if somebody comments on it, right now they actually um, did where you can reply. This only used to be for like pages, but now you can do it on your regular page. So you can reply. And you want to reply because the more you comment, the higher up it goes. And then you can also like that post too. So just know that you can like and comment and it will help that um, post get higher up in the news feed. Courtney, anything to add for that? Um, we'll go into value a little bit. You kind of touched upon it a little bit there. I don't want to jump ahead. Like the value of the post with the picture or like. Oh, yeah. I totally talk about that. Okay. Um, so, you know, like Rose said, I don't know the actual percentage, but of, think about how many times you're scrolling through Facebook and it's on your phone. Okay. So for me, there are times in the day where I don't have a lot of time to read all the long posts. So what draws me to something is the picture. And it's something that jumps out at me or that appeals to me or um, the part that I can read before I have to click see more is grabbing my attention. So you want your posts to do that to your audience. Um, again, your audience is continuing to grow because you're adding five people per day. Um, you're learning who your audience is. You're studying um, the clientele that you have um, by following their timelines and following their notifications. And then you're making posts to brand yourself, to promote yourself, not just the product. Um, think about scrolling through if you see a picture of Shakeology with a price versus you see um, like just yours uh, that Rose pulled up of someone drinking and sharing personally what it did. That provides more value for people than a cookie cutter um, advertisement. Um, other things you can do to add value or to make your post stand out, give options. Um, you have to pick an outfit for an event coming up and you're deciding between three dresses, post them. Post you in them or post them with A, B, and C, you know, write it on there, um, like text on photo, and have people vote. You might already know what you're wearing, which one you're wearing, but it's going to get engagement and it's going to um, people you don't think are following you are all of a sudden going to be the ones chiming in. Um, other things you can do is ask for advice, ask for a recipe, ask for you know, what would you do in this situation. People love giving their opinions. Um, and like I said, whether or not they are liking and commenting your beach body things. They're following you, and when they're ready or when they want to chime in, they will. Um, there's a perfect post from Roses just last week, I think it was. 
two weeks ago, before you did your hair, and people chimed in. She could have very well gotten to the salon that morning before she saw everyone's opinion, but it got a lot of engagement. I actually did look. <laughs> yeah, but like. Okay, I actually do want to know now. So that's literally, that's, I can see view 24 more comments, yeah. right? So that's a lot of people giving their opinion and, um, you know, for me, I know nothing about hair that I probably would be like, I have no idea. I really actually need your people's help. <laughs> um, but that gets people involved and people um, engaged. Um, Fourth of July, summer barbecues, you have to bring a dessert, you have to bring an appetizer, put it up there. What's something easy? What's something with fruit? What's something, here's what I have in my fridge, what can I make? Something like that, that people are gonna chime in um, and help you out. Um, ask questions, um, pictures are huge, videos are huge, um, and you know, you want your pictures to stand out, so you want to be getting into, it was you know, just posted in the last couple of days in our group, but things where you can write text on your pictures, you know, the Rhonda app, the Pick Play Post, and Photify, and all those different apps that kind of, um, you can add your own personality to a regular old picture. Um, what am I missing with um, posts that add value, tips, advice, opinions? Yeah, whatever you think you would want to see, like what makes you stop and look at a post? And like write those things down in a notebook, like, oh, I stopped because the picture, or this, you know. A lot of times I see people post pictures, I'm like, I can't even see what that looks like. I don't even know what that is. Why would I even stop to read what you said about the picture I can't even see? So mm -hmm. make sure your picture is clear. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll take pictures ahead of time. Like if I know I'm going to have a busy weekend or a busy day or something at school, like I have pictures kind of saved. That way um, I don't go a day without posting. Um, and sometimes my husband gets pissed because he's like, seriously, you just have 500 pictures. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, but you, and that's a good thing too. Like you want to be planning ahead for your Facebook posts because you want in the beginning to be doing three times per day, nine o'clock in the morning, 12 PM in the afternoon, is that 12 AM or 12 PM, whatever yeah. noon time, And then 12 at night. Those three times are pretty much the high times of when most people are on Facebook. That way you're going to get more eyes on your post. So if you post something at one o'clock in the morning, and everyone's sleeping because at this point, I think we're all, all adults and we're not partying out at the bars or anything at this point. Um, you're not gonna have anybody that sees that and that post is gonna go instantly dead like you never even posted that thing. So what you can do is, um, I'll share my screen again, I should just leave it up, but here it is. You want to, And it's not going to show it there. There's like usually like a little counter on the bottom right of your Facebook. I don't know where it went today. Oh, there it is. So it's at 194. So for me, right now is like a high time. So anywhere for me is about 200. So that's a really good time to make a post. Um, but for you, it might be different when you start off, depending on how many friends you have. So during the day, kind of just look and see what that number is and kind of just jot it down, like 9 o'clock in the morning, what time is that? Um, you know, sometimes moms might have different times because their kids nap and I think like their time is good around like the afternoon because um, that's when most of the kids nap. Um, so just keep looking at that counter because that's the best time um, to do the posts. Like I said, try and have some stuff planned ahead of time. So maybe like pick like Monday where, okay, Monday's my day to get all my posts done for the week. Or at least have ideas of what you want to do. You know, uh, maybe in the morning you want to do like a motivational post or maybe you want to do a video of your workout. And in the afternoon you can show a picture of your 21 day fix lunch. Um, and no, it does not have to be all about Beachbody. We do not want to vomit all about Beachbody. We want to do like a, a one to like a one beach body thing per day, um, you know, to work things in. I mean, now I think I can comment or post about my team more often because people know that's kind of what I'm all about. Um, but for new coaches, you know, just do one, one per day, whether it's your workout or Shakeology or talking about, oh my God, I went to Super Saturday and 
we did this crazy workout called size and I can't dance for my life, but it was fun because we all did it together. Um, so, you know, try and plan, plan out your posts. Um, nighttime posts, I think, are really good for engagement posts, so asking questions, you know, A, B, or C, or um, what Broadway play is really good to go to, or, you know, what, what was your best family vacation you ever went to, where, you know, what places in the Caribbean, whatever, like whatever you're into right now, maybe you're getting married, maybe you're wondering, you know, what's the best place to honeymoon at, there's just so many things that you can think of. Um, you know, also follow top coaches. Um, Lindsay Matway, I'm sure we're, we're going to post about this in the group if we, if we already have it. Um, I like Brigitte Linford. Um, who else? Uh, Colleen Eady, she's actually going to be on our call next week. She's really awesome. Um, Tasha Fitzgerald, she's going to be on our team call, too. She's awesome. She's a coach of Brigitte Linford's. Um, Court, who do you like? I can't hear you. Uh, Melanie Mitro is huge. You know, I know everyone's like, oh, she's the number one coach. She's the number one coach for a reason. Um, I love following Bonnie Angle. Um, she talk about, like, being yourself, like, without any um, – you know, holding back. Um, I like uh, Mindy Longhorn. Um, who else? He's funny. Right? Yeah. And what you'll see is just piggybacking on a couple of things that Rose said. One is you're going to post these things you want engagement with, right? You're asking an opinion and this and that. When you see other people, whether you communicate with them or not, doing something like that, non beach buddy coaches, make sure you engage give your opinion, um, you know, don't be like brass with it or anything, but that's how you're going to start that kind of foundation with somebody. Um, two, she's saying that she sometimes backs up her photos so she has something to go on the weekends. Do the same in a Google Doc with um, posts. And not all Beachbody, like Rose said, but, um, you know, um, recipes or um, – like I had, I have a, a Google Doc of like all these wedding things that I want to post without being like vomiting my wedding over people. So I would like space them out. And then when I used them, I would highlight them or delete them. And then if I was stuck or like couldn't think of anything, I would go to my Google Doc and be like, all right, um, I don't want a beach body one. I, I already did a workout picture today. Like what can I put in? And I'll just like go through my Google Doc and try and throw something up there. Um, that just kind of helps you through if you're getting stuck or helps you rotate through the things that define you and that you want people to know about you and you want to share um, with everyone. And I think we have to um, kind of give something for the guys over here, like Aaron. Um, I, I like Brad Bizjack, of course. He's awesome. Scotty Hobbs is great. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Nelson, he's really awesome. I mean, you can definitely take everything we're saying and put it in the contacts for males too, but it's just more manly. Obviously, you're not going to be talking about hair color and weddings and all this stuff, <laughs> um, but talk about what you guys like to talk about. <laughs> and of course, there's a lot of other um, male coaches. Um, Keith Wilson, he's really um, big in New Jersey. He's pretty cool. Um, I mean, there's a ton, but just pick like three of them. Three that you that you can relate to, um, and one thing that I always had problems with was wording. Like I'm horrible in English, and if you told me to write a book, I think I would probably like put a gun to my head. I, I hated writing. When I wrote my last <laughs> paper for college, it was like the best thing ever. But um, so I, I couldn't write. So what I did is I just kind of like looked at like Brigitte Linford stuff, and sometimes I would just like copy like little sentences here and there, make it my own. That way, like, I, I just, for me, like expressing my feelings on Facebook and writing it down, like doesn't connect with me, but just helping, it helped me looking at top coaches and how they wrote it and saying, okay, I, I can kind of take a, a, a bit of this and put it in and a bit of that to kind of connect the pieces. Um, you don't want to go too crazy with watching people because then that's all you're going to do and you're not going to be any of doing any of the action stuff we're telling you to do. So just, you know, watch two or three. 
um, take note on some of their stuff. If you like their stuff, you can um, not actually like it because then you'll just get a bunch of their stuff in your newsfeed. But you can, um, if you have like a Mac computer, you can do a screenshot of it or even do a screenshot of your phone. That way you don't have to like be like, oh, there's a post I really liked and blah, blah, blah. That way every, and I have a file, uh, like a folder for that of Facebook posts that I like from other coaches that I can kind of, you know, just take little bits and pieces um, for myself to use. And that's what's um, key about what she's saying is you want, you're promoting yourself. You're selling you. You're not selling Shakeology. Shakeology is going to sell itself. Um, Insanity, P90X, all that, it's all going to sell itself. It's, oh, you know, like number one in, in, in everything, infomercials, everything. But why would people with over 200,000 coaches come to you? Why would they use you as their coach? Why would they join you in this business? So yes, take what you're seeing and what they're doing, the top coaches, because they're doing it right, but tweak it and make it your own in your own wording, in your jargon. People will know right away if, if, if it's not me. I, I type exactly how I speak. Um, and same things with, with what you're sharing. You know, you're not just a beach body coach. You have a life. You might be a husband, a sister, a, a, you know, you might have a dog, whatever it is. Those things we we're talking about branding yourself. You want people to see the full you and you're selling yourself and, you know, to, to put it simply, but um, be you unapologetically. Yeah, that was a great point. Be you because. You know, Beachbody puts a, more than, I don't know, a million bazillion dollars for advertising. They do that on their own. If you don't know Insanity or P90X by now, you probably live under a rock. But that's besides the point. It really is. People want to join you and what you're doing. And on our team call this week, Crystal said, nobody wants to buy a, a bag of powder for $140. They are buying into you and that culture that you bring and that whatever it did for you and that energy, like all that other stuff, that's what they're buying in for. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to buy powder for $140 or $130. They want to be a part of what you have to offer. They want to have that financial freedom that you talk about. They want to, you know, have that energy and that excitement and wow, like Rose's life has like completely changed and she's so positive and outgoing now. She's completely different than what I remember. I hope people say that about me because that's how I feel. Um, so, yeah, be you. And if you're thinking no one's going to want to follow me, then you, my friend, need to do a lot of personal development um, because I promise you there are people that are exactly like you that are just looking for somebody to help them, um, and it's going to be you. Yeah, with that, don't be afraid to show your struggle. Yes. You know, don't make every post like a Debbie Downer, like I had a terrible day. And I, but you have to be vulnerable and you have to be real because people <laughs> was that like a terrible? <laughs> no, you just made me laugh. <laughs> um, like nobody relates to perfection. They don't want someone leading them that's so perfect and on this pedestal that if they slip up, they're gonna feel like they're letting you down. So it's okay to show them the goofy side and the failing side and the struggling side. You know, like Rose said earlier, you don't have to be at your goal weight. You don't have to be, um, you know, not every beach buddy coach has a six pack and a full bank account because it's business. There's ups and downs and every coach on every level whether they're 15 star or a brand new coach has them. And it's just a matter of people sharing and talking about it. Um, so don't be afraid to show that side of you. Being vulnerable is part of it. It's uncomfortable. I get it. It's very, it's hard for me. And now I'm at the point that I'm like, fuck it. I don't care. Like what people think. Sorry. I have a really bad mouth. Um, and just put it out there. And that's what people are going to relate to. And, appreciate more than being like, look at this perfect burpee I do and I never mess up and I'm never tired and I never max out ever, ever, ever. You're gonna max out and you're going to fail and share that with people. Yeah, so, and yeah. that was good. <laughs> you made me laugh there, I was like, that was just funny. Um, and I, I lose my train of thought. But what I wanted to say was, you know, post when, you just have to do it. You know, you can analyze and overthink. Are people gonna? What are people gonna think about me? Or just, just do it. It's Facebook. Like, 
it's not real. Like it is, but it's not. It's like something on the internet. You know what I mean? Like don't get so, don't overanalyze it and don't get caught up in what people are going to think about me. You're not posting a naked picture of yourself. You're not, you know, you're not going to be showing, uh, you know, you going to the bar, chugging a beer. Like those are things, you know, you keep off of Facebook, obviously. Um, you know, you this is your business, so you want to be, posting things that are going to attract people to you and not attract people away from you. So you don't want to be completely negative and a Debbie Downer, like Courtney was saying. Um, but you do just have to just go for it. Just, just do some posts, you know, what's the worst that's going to happen? Nothing. It's not real. It's Facebook. <laughs> and we'll you always, you always get us to like it anyway. <laughs> yeah, we'll like it for you anyways. You just gotta you gotta start somewhere. Um and you'll see like something that you might think would be like a total dud, people like really respond to. And then things that you think people might really like, no one comments anything. But take note of that and you'll start to see, okay, this is things I should be posting about and those are things I should probably just stay away from. All right. Um, I know there's only two of you on the call, but we'll open it up if you have any questions or near and 10. So we don't want to keep it too, too long. Jess, Aaron, any comments, questions, anything you want to share from this week that was good, positive? <laughs> oh. They're both giant. <laughs> Oh, there, Jess, you're on. Um, what you were saying earlier, I think both of you guys were talking about it with the posts not coming up in the feed. I posted at like 12 something today, the post that you showed before, mm -hmm. and it wasn't even showing up in my own news feed. And I was flipping out. I <laughs> actually, like, I had people like texting me while I was in work, and I was like, can you do me a favor and go on Facebook? I need you to like something for me. <laughs> I was like, because it's not even in my own news feed. So how does that happen? Like literally right after I posted it, not even there. I was like, seriously, where did it go? Man. It just happens. And I think sometimes if people, if a lot of people post at the same time, it, 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 just, know. it goes right down. But I do that. Like I get Dave's phone. So I usually get his phone at night and I like all of mine because nighttime is a good time that everyone is on. So if you see Dave like liking three things of mine at once, that's me. <laughs> and you can and I do that with my mom's too. Like if I'm at my mom's house for the weekend, I'll just go down and like like everything, like like all my posts. Um, but yeah, like just check out that time. That time might not have been just a good time for you. Okay, I don't know. That was I like purposely went out of my way. I was like, oh, it's around twelve o'clock. I'm supposed to post right now. <laughs> write it down and like kind of keep a log of how much action you're getting at the times that you're posting like post something similar like let's say next week and do like three o'clock or like just think about people in their jobs it sometimes this is hard for me to think about because I'm a teacher and like it's a very different schedule but people in their jobs that make it done at like five o'clock by three o'clock they're like oh what else can I do like let me I'm so bored like till I get out of here that might be a busier time for the people that are following you so just kind of keep a, a log of it so you can see when it's more popular and when it's not and I mean looking at it now though you have like almost 20 likes and you have comments and you have a share so sometimes you just have to like hang out and wait back and it'll kind of just catch up and you'll get and you'll get likes you know it might not just be at that instant you might just have to let it kind of ride out but sometimes I it myself <laughs> or like it yourself i liked it myself i was yes. like okay i swear i was never gonna do this but i'm gonna do it <laughs> damn right <laughs> sometimes i do that by accident and i'm like whoops <laughs> You didn't do it on accident. <laughs> click, 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 click. <laughs> Aaron, what about you? I'm, I guess I'm still just kind of struggling with, um, I guess, being out there and being consistent and not, um, 
like overbearing. Like if I if I see one post from myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone's gonna freak out. And like, you know, like I post something and I just don't check my phone then for like a day and just see the Facebook things, you know, start to pile up and I don't know what to do. I just I, I don't know. How do you how do you get out of your own way when you first start? Um, leap. <laughs> It's, it is scary, especially if you're not accustomed to posting a lot on Facebook. And um, to be honest, where, where I came from, the original person I had purchased Shakeology from, she's like an over the top, she's someone I knew mutually through other people and I had no idea this product was even out there. So that's how that all came to be. But she's like an over the top poster to the point that I was like, oh my gosh, like it was overbearing. And then learning about it and reading about it and kind of studying like the art of social media, you learn how to be strategic with it and not in your face. Here I am again. And, you know, we say three posts a day. Why don't you start with two and like every other day be a beach body one? You know, you, you got, you know, those two cute little kids and um, things you can post that you can still share yourself and your life and promote yourself without being like jazz hands up in the air in everyone's face. Okay. That's but I good. would definitely for, you know, personal development, I would get you're a badass. I would do any of the things that's like the confidence building. Um, and that'll give you that confidence to not care what other people think and just and get, help you get out of your own way. Yeah. You just got to get over that fear and just, and just do it. And, and realize what you and Nicole want for this business is that going to be taken over by your fear of posting on Facebook. So you have to be like, okay, here are our goals. This is what we want for our family. And here's posting on Facebook. Are they equal? No way. Like this needs to be way more important, but you need to get through that Facebook, you know, just break through the wall. And that's going to get you to that goal. You just need you just need to do it. Another good book I like is Eat That Frog, um, and it's just about that one thing that you just need to kind of break through with your life. That's going to have everything else, and that's by Brian Tracy. And that's just going to have everything else just fall into line. Um, and what I also wanted to say to you was, you know, find a good role male like coach, role model on Facebook to just watch. And write down, like, you know, what is Brad posting at 9 a.m.? Like, what is it about? All right. Then, like, at 12, what is his post? So, like, see what his posts are and what they're about, and then try and fit that into your life. So, you know, maybe he made a post about his dog. How can you – and this is going to sound bad, but how can you relate that dog, that, that post to your, to your kids? You kind of get what I'm saying? Like, like see how, like – like he's posting about his life here or he has like um, a post like he talks about his relationship with um, Janine, his girlfriend. So like how can you relate that with Nicole? So, you know, and then like he'll do a workout one and how can you relate that to you? So, you know, use get that to just get ideas of topics that you can talk about and kind of use that to guide you. Okay. Yeah, actually, um, started following him during the call when you mentioned him earlier Good. and so see what he does and and look at his friends because he's um obviously really big in beach body but he has a lot of you know male coaches too so maybe you can find somebody that i didn't mention or we didn't mention um that you might just be able to follow better you know you might have more in common with okay Good stuff. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. Um, does this work the same time for you next week, Courtney? Um, yeah. Yeah. I can't go to graduation, so. <laughs> you can't go? No, we still have no contract, so uh, no Oh, damn right. That's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, I'd rather be at home, too. I know. I'd also rather have a contract. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. All, All right. right, irrelevant. Irrelevant. <laughs> Let's end this call. Thanks, guys, for showing up. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. See ya. Bye.